The sun gazer is a 20 million year old species of lizard found only in South Africa. Because of their unique dragon-like appearance, there is a high demand for this species as a pet around the world. But there is a problem. The sun gazer does not breed in captivity and all the animals we see in the trade worldwide come directly from our threatened South African populations. For a species that is already experiencing population declines because of our land transformation, for farms, cities and roads, poaching for the pet trade is the last thing that this species needs. My name is Siobhan Parasnath and I'm doing my PhD in zoology at Wits University in South Africa. I've been obsessed with dinosaurs and dragons from as early as I can remember and this lifelong obsession led me to studying reptiles and I've spent the last seven years studying the sun gazer. Over this time, I've seen an increase in the number of sun gazers being sold as pets on social media and a decrease in the number of animals in the wild. Recent studies have found that reptiles are the number one most traded group of animals in the world, making up more than half of all trading animals worldwide. And the sun gazer is one of South Africa's most highly sought after species in the pet trade. But without the species breeding in captivity, something was wrong. It was clear to me that I was seeing some evidence of illegal activity. To learn more about the reptile trade, its history in South Africa and the problems we face, I spoke to two of South Africa's top reptile experts. Johan Maré is undoubtedly the name that comes to most South Africans' minds when it comes to reptiles. Johan has decades of experience dealing with reptile trade issues, from his time as a policeman and honorary officer at the Natal Parks Board, to his frequent consulting with nature conservation on poaching cases. Yes, I started, uh, you know, I started at, uh, with snakes at a very young age, in my teens, and, and I've never been uh, in favour of the exploitation of reptiles specifically. Um, and I think my first real involvement was back in 1979. So the trade in reptiles was really, really big in the 60s and 70s. It was massive. And there was one major exporter who was shipping out 20, 30, 40,000 reptiles a month. Just tons and tons. And by the time the reptiles got to the airport, a quarter or more of them would be dead. And it didn't matter because they were bought for nothing and they were sold for next to nothing. And what they did in those days, they'd drop a half a dozen guys in a, in a hillside and they would sleep on that hill for the next four or five days with massive crowbars and they would rip the area past and catch every single reptile they get. And we would look at a mountain range and say to this collector, well, let's take a drive there and go see what we can find. And he would say, don't bother, we've been there. We've done it. So in the past, you know, it was uh, uh, skinks going out at a random skink. That's, that market is, is no longer in existence. The reptile trade has boomed over the past few decades, with worldwide reptile fairs showcasing the vast variety of animals for sale. Unfortunately, there are loopholes in the system that are being used by people exploiting our wildlife for profit. Today, the market is much more sophisticated and specialized, and of course, the money is far, far greater. I think smuggling, well, that's still going on. It's becoming more and more difficult. There are more parcels being x-rayed, and if again, if you think of this sort of money, you know, a, good, a suitcase full of ra uh, rare reptiles is probably worth two or three or four million rand. If you have a, so what if you have to pay a 50,000 rand bribe? It's not big money. So what is happening is there's more and more of this, uh, this laundering where people are, there's a stamp permit that's signed off by a doctor, a veteran doctor, and the animals are going out with permits, but they are not being captive bred. It's just a big con. After talking to Johan, it was clear that South Africa's reptiles have long been exploited, with a clear list of problems facing rare and threatened species like the sun gazer. I spoke to Professor Graham Alexander to learn more about this worrying problem of reptile laundering. Graham has been lecturing at Wits University for over 30 years and has supervised more than 30 postgraduate research projects on reptiles. So as with money laundering, when you launder something, you hide the source of where you derive the money or in this particular instance, the reptiles. So with reptile laundering, what happens is that people masquerade as, as captive breeders of reptiles when in fact they're actually poaching reptiles and selling, selling them into the pet trade. It's, it's very easy to, to launder reptiles in South Africa because effectively even if the, the legislation is there, there is very little uh, enforcement of that legislation. So it's very difficult to uh, measure where organisms come from, uh, whether they have been wild caught or whether they have been captive bred. 
So there's several groups of Southern African reptiles that have got high demand in the, the reptile trade. Um, there's various types of snakes like the small adders, the tortoises are also in demand, and there's various groups of lizards, especially the cordalid lizards and some of the geckos, which fetch very high prices uh, internationally. Um, the girdle lizards and then of course the dwarf chameleons, very, very popular. Some of them have extremely limited distributions. Yeah, once you get to, the, to Europe, you go to Belgium, you go to Germany, you go to the Netherlands, and the USA is a massive, massive, massive market. With demand for our South African reptiles being this high, it seems like smugglers and launderers will find ways to get them out of the country. Using the loopholes in our systems, and the inefficiency and inadequacies of our local law enforcement to police these issues. But there are solutions. Okay, so the first thing we need to really change is our view of the importance of reptiles in ecosystems and how important they are in conservation. We need to take reptiles seriously. For reptiles, there's no budget. There's nothing. So it's all just random accidental captures. It's ridiculous. So although we have the legislation in South Africa to to limit the um, effect of, of laundering of reptiles. The laws aren't really enforced. We don't really have the tools to uh, ascertain whether um, a reptile that's sold has actually been captive bred. And so what we are doing now is developing the genetic tools to do just that. But we only have that available for a few species. So we need an action plan. We need the authorities to take responsibility. We need to look at the genetics. We need to uh, impose restrictions on these exports. Force keepers to have a genetic uh, data bank. Let, make them prove to you that what they are exporting is captive bred. Put the onus on them. An important part of my PhD research has been to develop these genetic markers for sun gazers so that we can do parentage tests on lizards that are to be exported for the pet trade. Since we developed these markers, they have been used in cases to deny permits for the export of sun gazers from South Africa. And I'm happy to say that since 2015, no more sun gazers have left the country under the guise of being captive bred. This small victory fills me with a lot of hope, but there are so many other species of reptiles that still need our help, and we have a long way to go to win this battle. Working with people that are passionate about reptiles, conservation, and education, we can make the changes in our country that are so desperately needed to save our dragons.